good day everyone this is part two of Rubin geometric properties using coordinate foot so let's go to the questions for question number one prove that the opposite pairs of the side of a parallelogram are equal so let's first all we need to do to prove this is to create a Cartesian plane and then um, put a parallelogram on it now let's do put on some the vertices of it so this will be our vertices so if you recall on how to put the coordinates of the vertices please go to the video tutorial that I created before this video so you'll be recalling on how to place figures in the coordinate plane so at this point all we need to do is to prove that the opposite sides of this parallelogram are equal Okay, so let's deal with the side first of this one. 0, 0 or segment AB, the side AB. So we'll be using the distance formula. So just write the distance formula. Substitute the values that we have. So this will be for x sub 2 and 0 for x sub 1. Then we have 0 minus 0. So that will give us this equation. So we have the measurement for AB as A. So it is evident by this one because this is this coordinate dictates the this, the length of this horizontal line. Now let's go to the second line CD. So these are the opposite sides of AB. So we use the distance formula, plug in all are given. So in this one, x sub two is a plus b minus b and c is and y sub 2 is c so c minus c will equal to 0 a plus b minus b is equal to a squared that gives us a as the value of our of the distance or the length of this side so on the other side other pair of sides we have ac that is your 0 and bc so let's use the distance formula to solve this that is b minus 0 and that is c minus 0 if we simplify it further we have this as our measurement of the distance of ac on the other hand we have um, bd so this will be our point 1 and our point 2 use the distance formula so a plus b minus a and c minus zero and that would give us b squared plus c squared so they have the same length so since segment ab is equivalent to segment cd and ac is equal to bd then the opposite pairs of the side of parallelogram are equal Show that the diagonal of a rectangle are equal. So we again, first we need to write the Cartesian plane. Then we need to put up a rectangle. Now let's mark off the vertices and let's put on a coordinate coordinate for this. So this is zero zero because this is the origin. I choose two a here because we will be dealing with a middle point here a diagonal the intersection of the of the of the rectangle so there will be so we will be naming this point so i'm thinking that this would be a so that's why i choose 2a here so since this is 2a so this one will be 2a as well the x coordinate will be 2a so for this one i choose the measurement of this one is 2b so again because of the point at the middle so i'll be thinking that this will be a and this will be b so therefore this will be 2b and 2a and that's why i will get this this is the choice of my coordinates here now these are the diagonals now let's check if the rectangles uh, the diagonal of the rectangles are equal let's choose ad first ad so these two so let's because we are dealing with the the length of the diagonals let's use the 
distance formula. So this will be our point 0.1 and our point 0.2. So write our distance formula. Substitute the given to a minus 0, then to b minus 0. So we simplify it further. 2a squared is 4a squared, and 2b squared is 4b squared. So that is the distance or of AD. Now let's use the distance formula again to find the distance of B and C. So let's assign point. This will be our point 1 and our point 2. After which, let's use the distance formula and let's substitute the given. So we have 0 minus 2A and we have 2B minus 0. So let's simplify it further. Let's square this. Negative 2a squared is 4a squared. And 2b squared is 4b squared. So since segment AD and BC are equal to each other, then diagonals of rectangles are equal. So that's how we prove this. Prove that the diagonal of a square are perpendicular to each other at its midpoint. So again, First things first is we need to write or to create a Cartesian plane. Put on some square here. So here, uh, name the vertices and put on the, the coordinates of the vertices. Again, this is I square. So we should see that all of these sides are equal to each other. Okay, I could just use 2a here and 2a here, but for the sake of discussion, I can say that a is equal to b here. So for for the side to be equal to each other. So now let's prove that diagonals are, are, are perpendicular to the midpoint. So our midpoint is ab. So let's go. So let's check the let's let's check the slope of AD. If we find the slope of AD, we will compare it to the slope of BC. So we'll be using the slope formula here. So slope of the line one will be two mm -hmm, B minus zero over two A minus zero. So that's just how it it done. So right now we'll simplify it. To simplify it further, we have B over A. So this is the slope of line or segment AD. So now let's get the slope of segment BC. So that is 2A comma 0 and 0 to B. So let's use let's assign point. So this is point 1 and point 2. Now let's use the slope formula for line 2. So we have 2B minus 0 and 0 minus 2A. So simplify it further. We have 2B all over negative 2A. Then let's simplify it further. We have negative B over A. Since the product of slope 1 and slope 2 is equal to negative 1, the diagonals of the squares are perpendicular to each other at its midpoint. So that's how we prove these properties. The median of the triangle is a line segment from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side of the side opposite to the chosen vertex. Prove that the median of prove that the median to the equal legs of an isosceles triangle are equal. Okay. First thing first is we need to plot an isosceles triangle on the Cartesian plane. So we we need to plot that and we need to put on the coordinates of this one. Now I choose 4 because we are going to, to find the median of this one and median of this one. And also this is the middle point here. So if this is 2a, for, for example this is 0, 2a and this is 4a. So this one, the value of x coordinate here will be a and the value of x coordinate here is 3a. So that's why I choose 4a. 2a here and 2b here because we will be 2b is here this is 2b and this point should be b and this is 0 so that's that's how I 
choose these coordinates for this triangle. Now let's prove first that this is an isosceles triangle. All we need to do is to find is to see if this side is equivalent to this side. So I will be measuring this side first using the distance formula. As you can see, this is my point one and point two. I just substitute the given that I have. So two b minus zero, and I will simplify it further and have be having this as my as the measure of my length here. I will do it, do it the same in this side. So we have 4a comma 0 and 2a comma 2b. So we'll use this the distance formula, substitute the given, and we'll be having the same measure as ac. So that proves that this is an isosceles triangle. Now if you're wondering what is the measurement of this, since this is 0 and the y is also 0, then that, that tells us that this is a horizontal line. So let's just get the difference of the, the x-axis here. So 4a four, four minus 0 is 4a. So the measurement of this is 4a. So now let's, uh, that proves that this is an isosceles triangle. Now let's prove that the medians to the equal legs of an isosceles triangle are equal. So these are the equal legs. So if we're going to get the median here, we're going to find the midpoint of this one and connect it here. We find the midpoint of this one and connect it here. Now let's deal first with the midpoint. Again, to get the midpoint, we'll just use the midpoint formula. 2a plus 0 over 2, 2b plus 0 over 2. So that's how we do it. We have 2a over 2 and 2b over 2. Simplify it further, we have a and b. So that is the coordinate of the midpoint of this side. Let's do that on the other side as well. So this will be our point 1 and point 2. So we have 4a plus 2a and we have 0 plus 2b all of them both of them is over 2 so we have 6 over 6a over 2 comma 2b over 2 and that gives us 3a comma b so that's how i see it as you can see this is the coordinate of 0 a 2a 3a and 4a and this is would be 0 b and 2b so see how magnificent the coordinates and the choice of our coordinates did well in our illustration. So now let's write the line here. Let's name the point D and E. Okay, let's check the, the distance of AE first. Use the distance formula. So upon, upon solving it, we finally come up with this this length. Next is let's measure BD. This is the distance formula. That is A minus 4A and B minus 0. Simplify it further. We have negative 3A squared. That would be 9A squared. And this will be B squared. So since segment AE and BD are equal, then the medians of the equal lengths of an isosceles triangle are equal. Prove that the quadrilateral formed by the midpoint of the sides of a rectangle is a rhombus. So let's let's first write a, rec a rectangle, name the midpoints, and choose our coordinates well. Again, if you want to know how to choose the coordinates, just go to my previous lesson on placing placing figures in Cartesian plane. So you will know the secret there. So let's check the midpoints of each one. Okay, let's do the midpoint formula. So the midpoint E is equivalent to 2A plus 0 divided by 2. And 2B plus 2B divided by 2. So that gives us here. Simplify further, we have A plus 2B. For F, we have 0 plus 0 over 2, and 2B plus 0. I divide on both sides by 2, so 0, comma, 2B. Next for G, we have 0 plus 2A over 2, comma, 0 plus 0 over 2. So that is 2A over 2, divided by 2, that is A, comma, 0. 
And lastly for h, we have 2a plus 2a divided by 2 and 2b plus 0 divided by 2. That gives us 4a divided over 2 and 2b over 2. That gives us 2a comma b. Now let's check if it is a rhombus. Now a rhombus meaning a quadrilateral that all sides are equal. So let's check side this side. Let's check this side if these are equal. We'll be using a distance formula. So this is the measurement of it this side. And let's check this side. So again, we will be using the distance formula. Let's just substitute the given and simplify it further. Okay, then the two sides are equal now. Let's check this side. Okay, so we have AO and 2, two A comma B, 0.1 and 0.2. Let's use the distance formula. And that is our distance is square root of a squared plus b and lastly let's check this line the measurement of this line point 0.1 and point 0.2 so just use the distance formula substitute the given simplify it since all the sides of since, since all the side is equal then quadrilateral form by the midpoint of the sides of a side of a rectangle is a rhombus so all of them are equal so therefore this quadrilateral is a rhombus so that's all for the part two of proving geometric properties using coordinate proof so watch out for part three and i hope that you learned something from today bye